Why has this tab been on my browser for the past two months? Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. That is the question many people are asking. <laughs> what kind of stuff am I into, right? Okay, so there's a good story. Whenever I have a million tabs open, there's a darn good reason for it. Those are episodes either in the making or topics that I need to reference in the near future. So yes, every tab has a purpose, even one about Kachina dolls. And it's this Les Paul custom right here for the reason why we have to talk about them today. So what is a Kachina doll? A Kachina doll comes from the Hopi Native American Indian tribe from Northeast Arizona. These are cultural and spiritual dolls used to teach young women about spirits, weather, human nature, and they can also act as messengers from the spirit world. Now you might notice I said spirit a lot in there, and that's because Kachina means spirit. And these things are exclusively carved from the root of cottonwood trees and were traditionally composed of just wood and paint. They would sit there and whittle away with these with knives to form them into what they need to be, and then they would paint them. However, just like Gibson Les Pauls, there's different eras in which they did different things, from more traditional ones that are kind of spiritual looking versus like a modern day one that has normal sized proportions. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few of these things. I especially got a good chuckle out of this one. This is a $10,000 wholesale price Hopi Kachina doll of a Koshare clown. When I first ran into this listing, yeah, that's probably about what my reaction would have been to if I saw this at my friend's house or something. It does look a little bit creepy, but the more you look at it, you can tell it's trying to resemble happiness or something like that. Here's one that's meant to resemble a black bear. Oh, it definitely has a long tongue on it. I could think of one guy who might want that. <laughs> and as you can see here, there's quite a market for this type of stuff. But now that we understand the Kachina dolls a little bit better, I mean, I'm not doing a whole in-depth history here. You can definitely check out this Wikipedia article for all the information you could ever want on these Hopi Kachina figures. But now let's get to the guitar content. This listing showed up slightly before Thanksgiving, and this was going to be the Thanksgiving Day episode that just never happened. So here were my first impressions of this. It was listed as a 1990. It has this beautiful translucent cherry finish on it. And then I noticed this fretboard and it got me really excited because I thought this was a custom ordered one-off guitar and it was listed at $2,800 here. And that got my heart racing. I was like, yes, finally a deal on something cool. I love documenting these types of guitars. But then I kept going through the photos and I saw the back. The neck has that sprayed heel that they were doing in the 90s. They also kind of have it around the volute area, which made me a little bit scared that there was a headstock repair or something. But it's such a dark finish as compared to the top. That kind of threw me off. And then the dolls. This first one here, it looks like an Indian chief tribe guy. I honestly really like that one. It's, he's just got that really cool mask going on there with the feathers sticking out. The next guy, he weirds me out a little bit. It's something that I don't quite fully understand what's going on there. So feel free to fill me in down in the comments section below. And then this one looks like a, uh, a bird lady to me, which kind of has a cool vibe to it. You can also see the heavy influence of the turquoise color that the Kachina dolls are well known for, as well as the red and white but it's this top one that made me fall in love with this guitar. I'm a big fan of the Legend of Zelda games, and this looks like a Deku scrub from Ocarina of Time or an Octorok from the original Legend of Zelda game. And that pretty much sold this guitar for me in putting it in a wiring episode or even maybe buying it. And I could also see that there's something over this potentially ebony fretboard. Most people don't finish over them, but you can see kind of where it's bubbling right there where the lacquer didn't quite stick. But then looking on our headstock, you can see you actually have the flip out winding tuners on this thing, which is not quite era correct here. And it said limited edition. It's all looking good, right? But you know, I'm pumping this episode up because something's not right here or else I would have bought it on the spot. The clear electronics cavity made me a little bit suspicious and the wiring did not look factory, but it's definitely a Gibson product. And then I saw this a letter that was sent to the now owner from the original owner of this guitar. So it said he purchased this in approximately 1991 as a used guitar. It was transparent red all over. So that means this guitar initially started life as a limited edition trans red from the limited colors series. They only made 200 of those guitars. 
And then I read, oh, it's been completely repainted. No, <laughs> that made me so sad. I wanted this to be a factory original piece, but they chose a cola burst, which was kind of interesting for the back of the neck. And it further read that this fretboard actually came from a custom shop employee and that all of this work was done at the custom shop. Now, does it matter where the work's done? No, the guitar's devalued anyways. The only time a really unique piece like this will be worth skyrocketing prices is when it comes from the factory that way and it's a one-off or limited edition model that people find desirable. You can custom order anything you want, but if nobody wants it, it's not gonna be worth skyscraper prices. It's gotta be desirable. And then it also said that they added some other parts to it here. I was really curious how much this guy paid, but he just happened to cut that out there. I think that's very strategic placing, but he did leave this, which allowed me to hunt down the original listing. Cause at this point I was like, dang it. I bet he got this for like $2,000, but here's the original listing. It was at $3,000, but get this three years ago. So this was not just an immediate flip on this seller's part. Gothic City Guitars actually owned this thing for quite a while. And it's this listing that saved me a whole lot of time and a whole lot of hate comments. <laughs> Cause this is where it says it's a custom Kachina doll fretboard. But notice it doesn't say anything about the modifications that were done to it. So it was almost like it was trying to be passed off as a mint condition, limited edition collectible, which is a little bit fishy, but the seller did seem to be straightforward with the guy who bought it. I'm guessing he ended up selling it for around $2,000. And if I really think hard, I believe I remember seeing this guitar, but that was before I was really well-versed in Les Pauls. Heck, I was still calling them Les Pauls at that time. <laughs> So this is just kind of an interesting Les Paul custom that even though it has been refinished, it's just so beautiful. That trans red top will allow you to see the wood grain beneath it. And I love this view that the original seller provided. You can see that black back. There's actually something called a tuxedo custom. Well, I think I gave it that nickname, but it's a white top black back Les Paul custom from the mid seventies. I have had one of them. Dokken was famous for using one. And it just kind of reminded me of that guitar with this view, especially once you match up that dark neck with the finish. It definitely pops, especially with the black plastics. And paired up with the floor of this cellar, it just kind of looks nice and rustic. So I hope you enjoyed learning about this one today. Even though it's not necessarily a 100% Gibson made product, it's been refinished supposedly at the custom shop. I wouldn't honestly put too much faith in that. I mean, it's possible, but does it affect the value anyways? Not really, it's still a refinished modified guitar. Somebody's ripped the fretboard off of this thing and replaced it with something else. And the entire guitar has potentially been refinished. It was definitely priced appropriately though, $2,795 plus $105 shipping. So about 2,900 bucks, that's what I saw as top value for this because it's just kind of an interesting piece. It's not a traditional refinished job and it appears to have been done very well and a long time ago. Definitely a fair deal for somebody. For our playing demo today, we'll listen to a 90s era Les Paul custom. <laughs> Question left, would you rock the Kachina custom or not? Leave your answers down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.